اللهم إني أسألك برحمتك التي وسعت كل شيء وبقوتك التي قهرت بها كل شيء صلي على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ولدينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشافي نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته طيبين طاهرين معصومين صادقين إن شاء الله tonight we're going to discuss two verses or two stanzas of the Dua Kamel. And in English, those stanzas are, I ask you by your power, which towers over all things. And I ask you by your face, which subsists after the annihilation of all things. During our previous sessions of the Dua Kamel, we discussed the mercy of Allah and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his mercy. We discussed the fact that man and everything in creation was created deficient, and that the only thing that can make man whole is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the thing that completes all of us. And we talked about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest, but we explained that in our minds, when we think of greatest, we find that there is a place where we stop. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so much greater than what it is that we could imagine to be the greatest. So we come to this week, and we're going to discuss these two verses. And in these verses, there's a word that is used there. We say, and we ask you, by Sultan Nikah. There's a word in there that most of us know, the word sultan, a sultan. What does the word sultan mean? Authority. Anyone? English. Ruler. Authority. 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 Ruler. Ruler. King. King. Anyone else? Supreme overlord. Absolutely. All the words that you had given to describe the word sultan or sultan were correct. But the word that they used in this translation was the word power. Now, when we look <coughs> up the word sultan in English, in an English dictionary, we find that the word sultan means Muslim ruler, the sovereign ruler of an Islamic country, especially formerly the head of the Ottoman Empire. The second meaning means powerful and domineering man, a man who is powerful in some sphere of activity, especially one who acts in a domineering type of a way. Now we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a man, but the word that they used in this verse is power. And the word in Arabic, it can, sultan, can, sultan can also be defined as power. But when we read the dua and we discussed things before, like the word iza, we find that we use the word power at that point too. So for those of us that are reading the English translation of this dua kamel, we find that they have power twice, back to back. What is the thing that distinguishes the power that was given the first time and this power that is given now? This is why it's very important for us to understand the tafsir or the understanding of the dua kumel because in this example or where the rule where the word sultanika we we ask you by your power there's a better word that we can use there because you guys said king you guys said authority so in actuality when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dua kumel the term rulership explains the type of power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in this instance. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his rulership, and his rulership, he rules over what? 
all things? Is it some things or all things? All things. This ultimate power, it can truly be seen in Surah Fatiha when we say, Maliki Yawmid Deen. Master, owner, and ultimately, the ruler of the day of judgment. On this day, this power, nothing can resist this power. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees something, who can stop it? No. When the angel of death comes to you, when he comes to you, why does he come to you? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends him. <clears throat> and when your soul is leaving your body, can you force it back in? <laughs> why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's also the ruler over life and death. We find that we say that there is neither power nor might except in Allah. And when we read in the Dua Kumail, when we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you by your rulership, what are we asking for? We're asking for all of our needs. We're asking for all of our wants. And we're asking according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rulership. Why? Because we have accepted and realized that there is nothing or anyone that has more rulership than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there is nothing above Allah. That nothing can exist except for except for by the power of Allah. We realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he rules everything. That because of Allah, if Allah says for the sun not to shine, it cannot shine. Most of you came in when it was raining outside. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the rain to stop, who can stop it from raining? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a drought to an area, area, who can stop the drought from happening? No one. This is the type of power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, and things only happen because of the lah, or because of the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we've come to this realization, this is why in the Dua Kamel we say and we ask you by your rulership that rules over everything. Now the next verse of the dua is a little tricky for those who do not have a true understanding about what Tawheed is. Why? Because we say and we ask you by your face. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a face? Mm -mm. No. Are you sure? I mean, uh, brothers in other schools of thought, they say that Allah has arms, he has legs, he has a head. Does he have a face? No, he doesn't. And for those of us that think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face or has any type of physical attributes, you have not truly come to understand what Tawheed is. Why is it that we understand that Allah does not have a face? How is it that we understand that Allah does not have physical features? Anyone? He's not, he has no characteristics of anything. Right, he doesn't have any human characteristics. Why? Because he's, he's, uh, he's, he's, infinite. Infinite. he's infinite. For him to have any features of being constrained in something or pertaining to something, to have lines, dimensions, borders. Absolutely. Because he's infinite and... Absolutely. That's it, he's beyond time. Absolutely. He's infinite, so he is needless. And if you have something like our bodies, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a throat, then he would need what? Water. If he had a body like us, he would need food, nourishment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that he's the one who feeds and is never fed. So what is it that we mean when we say, Allah, we ask you by your face? Yes. Some say that it means the that of Allah, the essence of Allah. It means his entity, his being. It's just a word to use because the most sacred thing on an item is typically the, the face. So Allah is teaching us by means of using this expression. Absolutely. Absolutely. By the face, we mean the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When did this essence begin? 
When will this essence end? Never. 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 Allah in his essence, he pre-exists and he's eternal. We discussed it before, can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be contained in time? No. Why? Because the created can never encompass the creator. Absolutely. Somebody's been listening. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so we understand that by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it is his essence. And his essence is unique. Because there is no essence like the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is through this essence that he has created everything. It is through this essence that he sustains everything. It is through this essence that we get to know him. Why? Because he explains to us what his attributes are. But why is it that he tells us about his face? Why do we use such terminology when describing Allah if he doesn't have a physical body? It is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolute. And we are referential. Which means that without someone giving us a reference to something that we can identify with, there is no way that we get an understanding. So like the brother beautifully explained, when we think about a person, we think about their facial appearance. Which is their essence and our psyche. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing what it is that he has created, has allowed this type of term terminology to be used just to aid us. But our imams have told us that any type of reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having any type of physical attributes constitute as what? Shirk. Shirk. Absolutely. Now what happens is, is that for most of you guys who may be familiar with uh, Jewish or Christian Scripture, the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be seen in a statement that Allah made towards Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam in the book of Exodus, the third chapter, the 14th verse. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa to go to Fir'aun, to Pharaoh, Musa says, who should I tell him that sent me? He says, tell him that the I am, that I am sent you. What is this word? What are they really saying? In the Hebrew, the word is Ehye Asher Ehye, which doesn't necessarily translate as they translate in many of our Bibles as I am that which I am, but it is I am that which I shall be and that which I have always been. So this explains what? The essence of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this whole conversation, this whole thing about people not understanding the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not true. But in order for people to get back to the essence of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, because many of our brothers, the Jews give da'wah to who? They propagate their religion to who? To no one. But they are the ones who understand this statement. So in order for those people to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the people before then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us what? The Furqan, which is Quran. the Quran, which would do what? Correct what the old people had mm -hmm. and give them the right belief set. Mm -hmm. And it is to guide us so that we won't fall back into what they had before. So what we find is, is that this essence that within this essence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not experience mortality. Because something that is ever living, everlasting, can never what? It can never die. So we find that in the Dua Kamel, with the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with him being the ruler over everything, with his face, which is the that, which is the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before anything existed, there was Allah. After the end of everything, there would be Allah. So we come into the understanding while we read in the Dua Kamel, and we say, Allahumma, 
إني أصلوك O Allah, I ask you, be by. And we've given attribute after attribute after attribute after attribute. Why are we giving these attributes? Because these are the attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us to do what? To know him. To know him. Huh? And how do we increase in faith? Only by getting to know Allah. There are people who say that we have to have a personal relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we have a personal relationship with Allah if we don't know who He is? How do we know to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for things when we don't know what kind of power He has? Many of you, many of us, we still have to call our parents every once in a while and ask them for something. Mommy, I'm, I'm, I'm a little short on the rent. Daddy, I, I need a little something for the car insurance. Or those of us who are, who are grown, who are adults, you know, that doesn't stop us either. You know, we have to call friends. Yeah, Achi, I don't have any gas money. When you go to these people and you ask them for something, like for those of you who know me, Many of you will sit back and say, oh, I need $5,000. Would you ask me for $5,000? No. You know why? Because you're like, man, that brother Hanif, he ain't got $5,000. There's no need for me to ask. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his attributes is that he's? al ghani al which means that he is what? The rich, the he's the rich. The he is the needless. He needs from who? Nobody. Nobody. That means that there's nothing in this world that we can ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he cannot provide to us. How do we know this? Only by learning the attributes that he had given to us to learn him by. This is why this dua kumel is so beautiful because the first, the whole first part of this dua is teaching us what are the attributes of Allah? What are the merits of asking for asking for things through these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by learning these things then we understand what our relationship is with Allah inshallah we'll close out this session I told you it was going to be short because we want to get um, the brother who went over to Iran give the brother that went over to Iran the opportunity to come and address us and um, give us the opportunity to ask him questions about his trip and um, after the short dua inshallah we'll open the floor for questions and answers أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد يا الله we thank you and we praise you for giving us the opportunity to come together and worship you and praise you and learn about what it is that you are يا الله you are the ruler over all things there is nothing that can escape your power and your rulership يا الله your essence will be that which lasts after everything is annihilated Ya Allah, we ask you to bring us peace in this in this terrible time for us. Ya Allah, we pray that you help all of our brothers that are living in Bahrain and the brothers that are all over the Islamic world who are being persecuted and who are being oppressed. Ya Allah, give us the insight to be able to pick up a pen, open up a blog, do something to write and tell the world about our brothers that are being oppressed. Ya Allah, we know all things come through you, and we pray all of these things. Bi Haki Muhammadin wa Alihi Lata, and we close this session with a surah to Fatiha. But before that, the loudest of salawats. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.